The first babies born with brain damage from the Zika virus are now growing into toddlers, and the most severely affected have little language or mobility skills and will likely require a lifetime of care. That's according to a recent study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Its findings were published in the New York Times. Pam Bellick is a health and science writer for the Times and the author of that article. Pam, welcome. Thank you. Um, it was so devastating to read uh, the results of this study, and I know you yourself have actually spent time in Brazil, but remind our viewers, Zika hasn't really dominated the headlines as it had uh, in months past. Remind us about the circumstances of this first initial wave of the Zika virus. Sure, so Zika hit um Latin America and started in Brazil um, really about two years ago mm -hmm. and it's believed to have been transported from French Polynesia mm -hmm. probably by soccer players who came to compete in Brazil and the population there had no protection against this mosquito-borne virus and it just sort of coursed through particularly northeastern Brazil and um, in about August or September, uh, fall of 2015, doctors started noticing babies being born with unusually small heads mm. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And um, they were able to link uh, the Zika virus to these birth defects, and it, Zika became the first mosquito-borne virus that causes such devastating birth defects. So the, the CDC study focuses on babies in Brazil suffering from micro, uh, microcephaly. Remind us what that is. This is a condition caused by the Zika virus, and what are the complications that come with it? Right, so microcephaly basically means that babies are born with heads, brains that are, are unusually small. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's a term that reflects a lot of damage in the brain. So what scientists have been able to figure out is that when um, a pregnant woman is bitten by a mosquito that is infected by Zika, and this doesn't happen for every pregnant woman, uh, seems to be about 10%, it's not entirely clear, um, who will transmit that virus to their developing fetus. Um, but when it infects the baby's brain, it damages the very, very early brain cells, the cells that um, go on to form many of the structures in the brain that we need. And so when that is damaged, mm -hmm. um, your brain just isn't growing to the size that it needs to be. It doesn't have everything that it needs. So give us some examples here. A baby that is, say, 22 months old. Mm -hmm. Developmentally, this is a time when a child would be starting to make some sounds like mama, dada. Oh, what sure. We, what, are, what have you seen? Well, actually, I mean, you know, a, a typically developing child mm -hmm. would be starting to make those sounds um, nine in, months, you know, nine months. Mm -hmm. um, by a year, many are starting to form early language sounds. Um, what uh, uh, doctors have been finding and what I've actually uh, witnessed myself in Brazil is that um, as these children grow, their development seems to be stalled. So uh, when I was in Brazil last year, I saw um, infants that were about a year old, maybe 15 months old, and their development was sort of clocked at about three months. Mm. This CDC study that I wrote about last week um, is looking at slightly older babies, about 22 months mm -hmm. old. This, this, is, this is the terrible twos. This is when they're supposed to be running around yeah. and talking and climbing. And um, they, they seem to have developmentally be about six months old. So they have very little language. Um, most of them are not walking. Mm -hmm. um, they have tremendous uh, uh, deficits in terms of vision and hearing. And what that means is that's the way that we take in sensations to learn about the world. Right. So they're not processing those senses. Uh, what are the therapies or treatments that are available for these children? Are there any? Unfortunately, there's not there's not a lot. Mm. Um, there are some treatments to sort of uh, to treat certain symptoms. For example, a lot of these children have seizures, and so they can take seizure medications to make those better. Um, a lot of them have um, very stiff muscles, and um, in Brazil they have had a, a campaign of doing some Botox injections to try to relax those muscles. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the brain damage and the developmental deficits, um, some kinds of, you know, sort of physical therapy and occupational therapy can help a little bit, um, but it's really 
not going to bring these children up to a typical development. Well, Zika and microcephaly are, of course, not isolated to Brazil. To what extent are we seeing problems like, like the doctors are seeing in Brazil here in the United States? So Brazil has absolutely been the epicenter. There are about 3,000 cases of microcephaly, and there may be, uh, there's expected to be sort of a second and third wave of damage um, affecting children in a less severe way but mm. still affecting them. Mm -hmm. In the United States um, uh, and, you know, and U.S. territories we have fewer cases. Um, the CDC has now said that there are about um, I believe 98 um, babies in the continental United States have been born with um, uh, Zika related brain damage, uh, about 140 or so in the U.S. territories, and they are currently following about 7,000 women in the United States and the territories who are pregnant and have Zika infection. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't know how many of them will give birth to babies with, uh, with brain damage, but um, it, it, the studies are, are showing somewhere between 6% and, and, and 25%. Oh, devastating. All right. Well, Pam Bellick from the New York York Times. Thanks so much, Pam, for sharing that study with us. Thank you. Happy to be here.